Are you currently suffering from pain along the knee joint line? That's made worse with those activities as deep squats or pivoting? If so, there's a good chance you're dealing with a meniscus injury of the knee. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Dr. Zach Guid here at Performance Sport and Spine in Seattle, Washington. And in this video, we're discussing all things meniscus, how it presents, what its function is, its anatomy, and the best exercises to fix this. And also why for most people dealing with this injury, getting the meniscus cut out is the last thing you wanna do. If you look at our model of the knee, we got the big thigh bone or femur, the big shin bone, tibia, and the smaller bone, the fibula, and then the kneecap. And this joint has these two blue things. Well, these are the meniscus. And these are fiber cartilage that act as shock absorbers and help with lubrication, stability of the knee joint. And you have one on the inside or the medial. This is larger and less mobile and more often damaged. And then one on the outside or lateral, and this is smaller and more mobile and it's more likely injured for young people. And with this meniscus, it's really important for the joint and that stability and that load transmission through things like running, cutting, and jumping, and it helps distribute the force so it doesn't go into the bone. Now, it turns out meniscus damage and injuries are four times more likely in males than females, and this knee is the most common joint that has injuries. Now, when you think about the meniscus, think about something that helps absorb the force. Well, let's say you get a little tear. In the past, people have wanted it cut out because it reduces their symptoms in the moment. But when you think about it, if those bones are pushing down and that meniscus, that shock absorber is gone, now, some of that force that should be going to meniscus is now going to the bone. And so we have lots of research now that shows that if you take that meniscus out, even only 10%, it increases your chance for knee arthritis and total knee replacement later in life. So you really want to think long-term here and do these exercises and stretches rather than just rushing for surgery. How meniscus injuries appear with pain is there's going to be pain along this joint line or this joint line, depending on if it's medial or lateral. Now, if you have pain more on this tendon or this tendon, it's probably patellar tendonitis, and here's a link for that. Or if your pain is kind of around the kneecap or underneath, that's worth with going downstairs and deep squats. It may be patellar femoral pain, and here's a link for that. Now with meniscus, it's often worse with pivoting, deep squats, or twisting. You can have some popping and snapping. Often early in the injury, there'll be some swelling. And if it's very severe, if the tear is very severe, it can actually cause mechanical locking or giving away. And the giving away is a very important indication that you may need surgery. If you don't have mechanical locking or giving away, it's very likely that rehab and exercises can fix your problem. At this point, if you found the video beneficial, please like the video, subscribe to our channel, and then don't forget to check out our other great videos. Now we're gonna talk about what causes meniscus tears. We've got to break it into two categories. We have an acute traumatic, which is probably a single event, and then degenerative. So for acute traumatic, think of like a 13-year-old soccer player. No knee pain, meniscus is fine, playing soccer, does some sort of thing where she plants her foot, flexes and twists, here's a pop, has some acute pain, maybe it's catching and locking, or less likely, maybe a direct blow to that knee, where that one event is gonna cause the meniscus. So she had an MRI Thursday, it's fine, plays her game Saturday, MRI Monday, it's gonna show a difference. And it's only acute trauma and there's often swelling. Now, another case would be a degenerative tear. So think of someone in their 40s. They haven't been working out a lot, they've gained some weight, they're working a lot. They decide to go running. Well, they run way too much, way too quick, and they get knee pain. Well, if you go and get an MRI, you're probably going to see some changes. We have studies here that show that a lot of people in their 40s have meniscus tears without any pain at all. So this is a classic example of just doing too much too fast, not that the MRI would have been fine on Thursday and then positive on Monday. That tear has been there for a long time. We have to slowly build the muscles up to protect it. So this lateral group, or the second group, is what we're looking for. The acute trauma may need surgery, but for people that have degenerative tears, there's so much research that says that PT is the same as surgery. They've shown that surgeries that are sham where they don't even remove meniscus are the same as real surgeries at 12 year or 12 month follow-up. So what I'm trying to get to you is that with these degenerative tears, you may need to dial back a little bit, but almost all of them can be fixed with just rehab and exercises. Let's dive a little deeper into what the meniscus is. So each meniscus is made of three parts. So there's this outer part that has blood supply or it's vascular called the red zone. So it heals well if it's torn. Now the inside part, the middle third, is called the red-white zone. Now it has a little blood supply, but not a lot. So it also can heal some, but not as much as the outer zone. And then the inner zone is called the white zone. It doesn't have any blood supply. So any nutrients it gets is through motion, which is why some walking and movement is essential, even if you have a tear. Now you may be wondering, why doesn't it have blood supply? Well, the reason is, is the collagen fibers are at a cyclical 
orientation to help so when the force comes down it helps distribute it on the bone which is why you don't want to remove it if that force that doesn't go into the meniscus goes into the bone you're going to have more chance of arthritis later in life but for the rehab exercise we're going to make sure the knee has full range of motion so fully straight it and then bringing your heel back which is flexion we're going to give you two options for both but make sure you can get 180 degrees basically straighten your knee fully out and then bring your leg back to 120 degrees with minimum pain before you start the exercises so one of our favorite exercises for getting flexion of our knee is to be in this rock back position with a pad under our knee and we're going to just push our hips back towards our heels to help increase the angle of the knee and kind of use your body weight to do slow and control to help promote flexion of the knee now if this hurts too much what you can do is put more weight onto your other knee and rock back with most so say my right knee was a painful one i'm putting most of my weight into my left knee band assisted flexion so if our right knee is over trying to promote flexion we're going to put a stiff band around our foot attach it and then we're going to pull the band towards our chest to help assist the flexion you can use your arm to push it back into extension and again try to use your leg but also that band to try to promote and pull your heel towards your buttocks as far as tolerable use your hand to press back out and with each rep try to press a little farther but go slow and add each day in terms of how far you're pulling <laughs> Now for extension or getting that knee fully straight, what we love is in a seated position, we're gonna use our thigh muscle to kind of contract and push our knee back and down into the floor. Make sure your toes are off and just your heels on the floor. And again, use that leg thigh muscle to try to get extension. Now two progressions, what you can do is you can put your hands on your thigh and press down into the floor with your hands as you squeeze your muscle to kind of give a little overpressure. Again, go slow and controlled and gradually increase over time or you can use that band and pull up towards your chest as you push your knee down towards the floor. You should only start these level one exercises once you've had full range of motion. So 180 degrees of extension and 120 plus degrees of flexion, no or minimal pain with the activities and you feel comfortable starting non-weight bearing exercises. So the best initial exercises are just ankle pumps and this starts getting some motion in the legs without loading the knee too much. And all you're gonna do is a seated calf raise, keeping your toes on the ground, this gets blood flow going and starts working some of the muscles. And then as you build confidence and the pain reduces, you can bring your feet farther and farther away and keep doing it to kind of promote that extension. This one, you're gonna need like a PT slider or maybe a washcloth if you have a hardwood floor, but on carpet, it's the best with the PT slider. Dig that heel down of the affected leg and you're gonna pull it back as far as you can and then press out as far as you can. I go slow and controlled, but sometimes what you'll find is as you do it, you can get a little more range of motion as you do each rep. So start slow, but with each rep, try to bring that heel back a little close to your buttocks and then press that a little farther away. This is a supine leg raise. So keeping that, if this right leg is the one we're working on, ankle in neutral, knee fully straight, activate that thigh or quad muscle, raise up slow and controlled, and return to the starting position. Make sure to pull with your thigh muscle and not your back or your core and keep that knee as straight as you can through the full motion. Seated ball extension. So the nine inch PT ball or something else to kind of give you a little bit of space in that knee, using that thigh muscle with your ankle neutral, put one hand on the thigh, contract it, straighten your leg, and come back down. Now it may be a little painful or too hard, so all you might do at first is just pull up a little bit and that's fine, but over time, try to get that knee to get fully straight and lift your heel as high as you can. Band assisted hamstring stretch. So lay in your back with a stiff band, knee straight, ankle neutral, bring your leg up as high as you can actively, and then pull passively with that band to get a good stretch on that hamstring or that posterior chain. Hold for 20 to 30 seconds. This one, we're gonna be like a hamstring bridge, not in a glute bridge. So your heels are gonna be out and your legs are gonna be a little bent, but mostly straight. We're gonna activate those hamstrings. So you're gonna pull your heels down into the floor but you're not gonna lift your buttocks up. So nothing's gonna lift up, but you're gonna feel activation in the back of those thighs. Pull down as hard as you feel comfortable and hold for 20 to 30 seconds. At this point, you should only progress to level two if you've done a lot of the level one exercises. You have no or minimal pain during it. It does not increase your pain the next day and you feel confident doing that. And you've done them all for at least three weeks. Glute bridge squeezing with the ball. So that PT ball between your knees, we're gonna squeeze in with our knees, hands to stabilize, lift up with our hips and glutes, pause for two seconds, and then return to the starting position. Make sure to keep that ball squeezed between your knees throughout the whole movement. 
and you're using your hips, not your low back to lift. Next is gonna be a medial ball squeeze. So with our legs straight, that ball between our ankles, knees straight, ankles in neutral, press our feet in with our adductor muscles, hold for 10 to 20 seconds, and then repeat. Make sure to keep your knees straight so they're in touch with the ground the whole time and really squeeze with those inner thigh muscles. Sideline leg raise. So on your side, if the affected leg is up, you wanna keep that heel in contact with the wall the whole time. Raise up using that outer glute for hip muscle and then come down. Make sure to keep that heel in contact with the wall the whole time so your leg doesn't go forward. Band and knee extension. So in a seated position with our leg a little bent, we're gonna hold up tension with our hands or maybe anchor the band above you. And holding up, we're gonna drive our knee down towards the floor and then back up. Make sure to activate that thigh or quad muscle and drive your knee back down and then up and try to maintain tension with that band as you do so. Go slow and controlled and make sure you fully extend or straighten that knee. Don't start or don't stop short. Make sure to go all the way down. Lots, we're gonna do it in three progressions because as you flex or bend your knee more, it puts more pressure on the meniscus. So initially, we're gonna only go down to about 60 degrees and then hold. You can do this for a week or two. After that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go all the way down to 90 and hold. Do that for a week or two or as long as you need. And then later, after you feel comfortable with that, you're gonna work on doing air squats. And you may wanna use a bench at first, but again, the goal is to try to go all the way down past neutral leg press. So with that band pulling back towards your chest, with tension with your knee bent, we're gonna use that thigh, pull down, and then come back up. Pull down, or push down, I should say, and then come back up. You can pull more tension to make it more challenging, or if it's a little too much, soften it up at first Build that full range of motion. Make sure the back of your knee almost hits that floor. Fully straighten your knee and then come back. One of these exercises is a lateral lunge, which is gonna work in a different plane. So we're gonna step out, keeping that leg straight and push our hip back and then return to the starting position. I want you to follow the same progression with the squats. We're gonna only bend the knee a little bit less than 60 degrees initially for a few weeks. After you've done that and the pain is fine and it's not flaring up and you know the knee can handle that, you can go and then go a little deeper. But trust me, if you push the bending the knee too fast with this, you're gonna irritate this. So you have to let the body dictate how fast you progress this one. Here are some really good accessory exercises, especially for that posterior chain. With an exercise ball, we're gonna do a double leg isometric bridge hold. Hold for 20 to 30 seconds. Progression is a single leg hold. Same rules apply. Only do this after doing the double leg several times, but work up to holding for 20 to 30 seconds the double leg ball rollout. So lift up with both hips, roll your legs in, pause, and then roll out. There's gonna be some side to side stability. So go slow and controlled and only do this if you feel ready. You should do the other two first for a while before you start this one. Then lastly, a single leg rolled. Obviously this is the most advanced, so work up to it. It's a great killer at the end, but if you go too fast, you're gonna flare the knee up. So only make, do it if you make sure you're ready for it. Ask me to talk about movement is medicine. I think a lot of people think that if their meniscus is torn, more motion or more movement is just gonna hurt it more. But the body's adaptable. And what they're finding is that when we move with these tears, it actually promotes healing, promotes nutrition, promotes lubrication, and it promotes increasing muscle mass to stabilize that joint. So you probably can't walk as much as you want initially, but it's really important that you start doing something. Cycling, using a treadmill or elliptical can be really good additions initially to start getting the motion in the knee without too much weight bearing. So what I'm trying to get here is keep moving, maybe reduce a little bit, but the goal is to get back. And over time, that body's gonna adapt and figure out. And so even if that tear never fully resolves on MRI, your pain and function will be restored and you won't care. Thank you for watching our video on meniscus injuries. We hope you found it helpful and beneficial. If you did, please like the video, subscribe to our channel, and then don't forget to check out our other great videos.